to introduce our next honoree and recipient of Saka's Medal of Merit Award, Dominic Candoloro. Born and raised in Chicago Heights, he is not Sicilian, but he's a longtime member of the Sicilian American Cultural Association. And as I said before, you don't have to be Sicilian to become a member of SACA. His father, Ludovico, was born in the village of Casoli in the region of Abruzzo. He was a veteran of the Italian Army in World War I. His father came to the United States in 1922 as a stowaway aboard a ship from Cuba carrying illegal aliens. Somehow, he managed to reach Chicago to work as a laborer in the Taylor Street area. His mother, Yolanda Gianetti, was born in the town of Amasino in the region of Lazio. She immigrated to the United States in 1914 at the age of five with her mother and settled in the Chicago Heights area. There she met Ludovico and they were married in 1931 during the Depression era. Dominic was the oldest of three children. His mother wanted Dominic to be a doctor he did not disappoint her. He received a doctorate in history <laughs> and is known as Dr. Candelaro. He attended Northwestern University on a scholarship and in 1962 received a degree in history. He earned his master's degree and his PhD in history from the University of Illinois. <clears throat> he was the first in his extended family to graduate from college and one of the first Italian Americans in Chicago Heights to receive a PhD in graduate school at the University of Illinois. Dominic served as an assistant to Professor Rudolf Vecoli, the famous Italian American historian who became his mentor. While teaching history at Ohio State Uni University, he met and married the love of his life, Carol Cutler. In 1972, Dominic visited his homeland with his wife, Carol. He returned very enthusiastic about his cultural identity. From 1977 to 1982, he taught at the university of Illinois, during which time he was awarded a grant of over $300,000 to document the history of Italians in Chicago. This set off a whirlwind of activity for the next three years that included oral history interviews, thousands of photographs, documents, and memorabilia, three national conferences, three exhibitions, and the involvement of hundreds of volunteers working out of the university and the cultural center to complete this project. The Italians in Chicago exhibit is now permanently housed at the Italian Cultural Center at Casa Italia. It was the beginning of a professional career that would turn him into a champion of Italian culture, dedicated to improving the lives of folks from our community, helping all of us not to abandon our rich ancestral ethnicity. He was awarded a Fulbright Research Fellowship in Italy in 1981. Dominic was also Deputy Mayor of Chicago Heights and the former executive director of the American Italian Historical Association. He has authored or edited more than 12 books and 30 academic articles and reviews on the Italian-American experience. 
He has organized and promoted hundreds of lectures, films, art exhibits, book presentations, and the immersion weekends at the Italian Cultural Center. In the last few years, he has focused on the Florence Roselli Library, where he is curator and the publication of books by Casa Italia. Casa Italia is extremely fortunate to have this highly educated and motivated community leader, especially on a voluntary basis, as their historian, author, and authority on everything Italian in the Chicago area. His latest project should be entitled Mission Impossible. <laughs> he has promoted a campaign to raise $500,000, an amount to be matched by Loyola University to create an endowment to support a professorship of Italian-American studies at Loyola. What a noble endeavor. Almost 80% of the money has been raised. And if you really want to make Dominic profoundly happy, you can contribute to this most worthy cause so that his Mission Impossible can become a reality next year. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our extraordinary Italian honoree, Dr. Dominic Candelero. job as my public relations. <laughs> I would be honored. <laughs> Go ahead, Doug. Thank you very much. As I listened to that, I thought uh, he was talking, uh, everyone else says about someone else. Uh, uh, there are uh, major projects and people that I've forgotten about it. It's been so long. But it, uh, an important aspect of it, as Josette said, is that it, it's very satisfying. It could be frustrating, it could be uh, a hard, really hard work, uh, you could be missing a lot of other things that you would like to do, but ultimately uh, it's satisfying. And uh, I, I enjoy what I've done. And uh, in uh, thinking over my career, uh, I've, uh, I remembered a lot, a lot of hard work but also a, a lot of uh, joys and, and friends that it brought me, uh, brought into my life. Uh, and people in, in Saka, for instance, and uh, especially um, Tony Scariano, uh, a, a saint in my eyes. Uh, Tony was the uh, very best and most accomplished Italian-American uh, I have ever known, or will ever know, I think. Uh, and. I am uh, really proud that uh, Tony's name is uh, on the Medal of uh, uh, Honor recipients, and uh, I, uh, I also look around to the others. Uh, Rose Fer the fabled Rose Farina here uh, was a Medal of Honor winner, and uh, Father Gadanzini, you know, the origin of the uh, uh, Loyola Project was right here in this room where in 2006, Father Gadanzini received the award and then he took questions and answers. And I asked him about a question, uh, about a question about whether he was open to having an endowed professorship of Italian-American studies. And he said, yes, he was, and that if we would raise a million dollars, he'd come up with a million. Well, it took a while to process this whole thing, and it got revised, but uh, in, in a couple of years uh, ago, uh, Tony Fornelli and I met uh, for lunch with Father, and uh, we made an agreement to go ahead and do what we had talked about here at that Saka Awards uh, uh, luncheon uh, so many years ago, well, whatever year, six or four, eight years ago. Okay, I can do the math. Um, uh, that, uh, that is uh, probably one of the most important things that Saka has ever uh, done for me uh, in, in shaping my life. Uh, 
And uh, of course it was Scariano who uh, brought me to Osaka in the first place. And I'm glad to see that uh, uh, Father Faso uh, was honored because it all goes to prove that Chicago Heights Italians are the best Italians. <laughs> Father Faso and, and so forth. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so, speaking of uh, Chicago Heights, I have my family here. Um, I'd like to introduce my wife, Carol. A wave, Carol. Uh, Carol is not Italian uh, in the background. However, she uh, uh, cooks uh, as well, almost. Uh, and in some cases better than my mother. Uh, <laughs> well, the only reason is that Carol got to travel all around Italy and learned uh, to, to do things other than what they had in Amazon. Oh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> uh, and I have my daughters here, uh, Anne and Gina. And uh, they've given me... Uh, Five grandchildren. Uh, we're looking forward to more. Uh, and uh, my son Nick can't be here. He's uh, I got to work today. But the grandchildren, uh, you've probably heard it. Uh, it's much better than being a, a parent than being a grandparent and getting all the benefits, none of the responsibility. So, uh, and uh, I think I come in second to Dan. Uh, in terms of the number of uh, kids that we were, uh, we fed to the uh, 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 children's summer camp. Uh, I, I brought in five each year. We even brought Charlie, uh, wave Charlie, before he was old enough. He was like three and a half or four, but we brought him anyway. Uh, and then. Uh, uh, there's Caroline, who is the oldest one, and Caroline really does uh, speaks uh, Italian well. She has a nice accent. Uh, in any case, I am dedicated personally to uh, uh, continuing the Italian American tradition, and uh, I am dedicated professionally. As you know, oh, prof speaking professionally, uh, there uh, people in the volunteer library section. Please stand up and wave and make noise and all that. Those folks come in every day, every Wednesday, uh, to the library. And in addition to uh, having a nice uh, coffee break, uh, we try to save every stitch of evidence that Italians existed in Chicago. Because uh, our Italian-American heritage is at risk of being lost. Uh, other ethnic heritages are too. If we want to maintain the story of our past, if we want to maintain understanding and knowledge of our history, we have to do something bold. We can't just sit back and let it happen. If you do that, it just slips away. So this is the uh, motivating factor that uh, I have in uh, the Loyola Endowed Professorship. And when I say endowed, I mean endowed in the financial sense. This means is that uh, once we raise this money, it will stay there forever, and the professorship will live off of the investment results. It's the miracle of capitalism. It's the miracle of uh, having a university that lives forever, we assume. <coughs> It's the miracle of being partnered up with a Jesuit institution. And so uh, uh, I've been uh, uh, very lucky. I cannot tell you any specific things that I did that resulted in uh, donations to this fund. Uh, but I've just done a lot of things. I must have sent out three million emails. And uh, well, a lot of telephone calls, and somehow the money appeared, and a big donor appeared, and all these other things. And we are 
it looks like for perhaps toward the end of this year when people do their taxes, uh, we will go over the top. We're at about 420,000 of the 500,000 that we need. And uh, those of you who might have thought that your small donation of 150 or whatever dollars wouldn't make any difference, uh, think again. When you put those numbers together, um, pretty quickly you can add up to uh, 100,000. So uh, I'm making an appeal to you. I, think that uh, I had my uh, grandchildren uh, uh, leaflet the tables uh, on the uh, project, and I hope you'll take that home and, and, uh, and seriously consider writing a check. But on, on another note, uh, we Italian Americans have to unite or die. Uh, we have too many small organizations uh, that uh, are not focused in uh, the projects that they uh, are working on. Uh, they get lost in the uh, uh, maze of becoming just social organizations. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to save a culture and save the memory of a culture, you've got to unite, you've got to get smart, you've got to make priorities, those priorities have to be linked to things uh, that have endowments attached to them. If you look into the future, there aren't going to be a lot of, as many people identifying as Italian Americans in the future because there's so much intermarriage. Something has to happen. Something very active has to happen. Uh, books need to be published. Courses need to be taught. Uh, new, uh, new united organizations need to move forward and raise money in uh, smart ways. We've got to get beyond the, uh, uh, the, the past uh, uh, ways of, uh, of uh, raising funds for things. We've got to get smart. Anyhow, uh, those are from whatever is worth my uh, experience, those are the things I, uh, uh, I put forward today. And uh, again, thanks to Saka, thanks to Paul Ciminello. Uh, Paul uh, uh, has uh, really encouraged me to uh, uh, participate in uh, Saka the last few years. He's been a big supporter of all the work that uh, I've been doing at the Casa Italia. And uh, we just need, uh, uh, well, uh, two or three more Josettes, uh, two or three. Uh, more of Paul's, and, and then you will probably wouldn't need any more of me, but uh, after we've reached our goal, you won't need any more of me. Uh, but uh, uh, thank you uh, very much for this honor. Uh, I, I'm proud of it for myself. I'm proud of what uh, my parents, even my mother, after I insulted her cooking, uh, she would still be proud of me. Uh, my father would be happy to know that he was mentioned on the podium today. So uh, thank you very much for this honor. I'm very pleased.